Hi, this is Section 2.5, Applying the Distributive Property. I wanted to start out again, direct you to the Khan Academy website. If you want even more detail than what I'm going to give you regarding the distributive property, again, this is a good place to go. You can see there's, there's videos here on the distributive property, certain examples that um, Sal goes through. In addition, what I'm going to do, the distributive property, again, is something that I'm, that I'm sure you've been introduced to in eighth grade. Um, it's a very important property. I am going to spend time covering it, but if you feel like you even need more, if, you, if you're looking at this and you're like, wow, I've never seen this in my life, I would definitely recommend you go to the Khan Academy site. You can see it here, and just type in here the distributive property, and you will get to these videos, okay? Um, the distributive property, let's talk about um, what it is and what it does. Now, in the book you see a key concept box on page um, 96. <clears throat> um, I think it might be easier for me instead of doing what they're doing is to try to draw you a picture of what the distributed property is, okay? And the best way I can draw a picture would be to use algebra tiles. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a simple expression here and I'm going to do um, four times x plus 1, okay? And let me get out algebra tiles for x plus 1. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with algebra tiles and, have, and you have used those before. <coughs> Remember, in algebra tiles, first of all, you have those little simple square yellow tiles, which means 1. And you can see in this problem I have 1, okay? And then you also know there were longer, thinner, rectangular tiles that were green on one side and red on the other, and those represented a variable. So here's my x tile, and you can see I have x plus 1 here. Now, when I have a 4 outside of that, that means I have 4 sets of these tiles. So let me get out 4 sets of these tiles. I have one set out. I need a second set of those tiles out. I need a third set, and I need a fourth set. And I also need four sets of these tiles. Let me get those out. I, I have one, I need two, I need three, and I need four. Now remember, each of these tiles were my X tiles, each worth one, and each of these were just my one tile, which are worth one. Can you see in this picture how I have four X tiles plus four? This is a picture of distributing. Now, how do I get this to that on paper without having to use these tiles? Well, it's simple. You do a process called distributing. I got to take four times what is in here. Each of these, let me underline, each of these have to be multiplied by 4. So oftentimes, you'll see in my video, I'll just do this. i got to take 4 times x, but I also have to take 4 times 1, and I have to add those results together. So I'm getting 4x, 4 times x is 4x, plus I'm getting 4 times 1, which is 4. 4x plus 4. Or here would be another example. Let's say that I had, let's do another one here. Let's say I had 2 times x minus 3. Well, I'll do an algebra tile example again. So first of all, to, to get that, I'm going to get these tiles out. I need to get out an x tile. So here's my x tile. And I need to get out negative 3. I've got to get out 3 negative tiles. Now, to do that, I first of all have to do here, and I've got to change. Okay, negative was red. So let me get out 3 of those. Okay, now, this is telling me I want two sets of this. I've got to get out a second set. So I need to get out a second set of these. 
and I have to get out a second set of that. Okay, well, let me get out my pen. These were my X tiles, and remember, I had negative 3 to start. I had to get out a second set. Well, look at what I have now. I have two X's, and I have negative 6, minus 6. So how on paper do I get from here to there? Well, I simply multiply. I have 2 times x, which is 2x, minus I have 2 times 3, which is 6. I have 2x minus 6. Now, we don't always obviously want to get out of tiles. If we can just do that process, we have it. It doesn't even matter if I had a variable here. Like, let's say I had y times y plus 3. Well, once I get the distributing pattern down, it's easy. All i got to do is distribute. y times y is y squared plus I have y times 3. Well, y times 3 is 3y. Okay? That takes us to page 97. We are now talking about two important words that we have to know terms and coefficients. All right, so I'm just, I'm just going to write something out here. I'm going to put uh, negative 2x plus um, 5x plus 8. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the word terms. This expression has three terms, and I'll underline them in green. One here, one here, and one here. This expression has three different terms. Those are terms. Whenever I'm adding or subtracting things together, that's a term. So let's make sure we understand that, okay? If I had this on paper, this is not four terms. This is one term only. I am not adding or subtracting anything together. Terms are when you add or subtract. I have one, two, three things being added or subtracted. I got three terms here. This, one term. Now, inside a term, there's another word we have to be familiar with, and that's called coefficient. Okay, so what's a coefficient? A coefficient... Always got to check on my spelling, and well, for crying out loud, that's terrible. Coefficient. There we go. Coefficient is a word that means a number leading a variable. Okay? So here I have a coefficient negative 2. Here's a coefficient 5. Okay? This is not a coefficient. This does not lead or is not in front of a variable. This has a, a, a different term or word to it. This is called a constant. I don't know if you can see that well. I did it in yellow, and I probably shouldn't write it in yellow. I'll, I tell you what, I'll do it in red, even though there's nothing wrong with this. I normally, you know, I write in red when something's wrong, but just so you can see it, this is called a constant. Okay, coefficient is the number leading or in front of a variable. Okay, now within terms, we have another word we have to know, and that's the, the term or the word like term. Okay, and a like term is a term that has the same variable parts. That means same variable, same exponent. So, for example, if you look up here, I'm going to circle these. These terms are like terms. They're both x's. I could actually add these, negative 2x plus 5x. I could combine these together and make it 3x. You can only combine like terms. For example, if I had 3x plus 4x x squared, these are not like terms. And you might be like, well, why? Aren't they look alike to me. Well, here's the key thing. 
Yes, they do both have x, but here's the key point. This has x squared, this does not. For, for terms to be alike, it has to be same variable with the same exponent. I can't add these together. They're not alike. Think about it. You can only add things that are alike together. I can't add uh, $3 and 5 cows and come up with 8. It doesn't make any sense. You can only add or subtract like terms. All right. Uh, here's another thing, another example. 3x plus, let's do 4xy. I cannot add these. They're not alike. I have x's here, but this is xy's. xy's are not alike with x's. Not alike. I can only add like terms. So part of your assignment today, you will see, when you go to page 99, 20, questions 21 to 26, they're going to ask you to identify the terms, the like terms, the coefficients, const, and the constant terms. In questions 5 to 20, they're going to have you practice the distributive property like I showed you here. And it's very simple. The, the distributive property, you don't need a picture. You just multiply. The distributive property is telling you basically multiply what is outside the parentheses with each term inside the parentheses and write an expression. The distributive property. And finally, on page 99, on the bottom, numbers 28 to 39, they are going to have you practice simplifying expressions. Maybe I should just do one with you like that or two just to make sure like that you're okay with this. Let's say like we have something like number um, 33. 33 says 6r plus 2 parenthesis r plus 4. Okay, so here's the first thing I'm going to underline it. I notice right here I have multiplying. Well, order of operation. Shouldn't I multiply before I add? You're darn right I should. Do you see the distributive property here? I got to take 2 times r and I got to take 2 times 4 and write an expression. So let's do that. I still have 6r plus, well, 2 times r is 2r plus I have 2 times 4 and that's 8. All right, let's keep on going. Do you see I have one, two, three terms? I want to simplify this. I better, I should mention this too. Whenever you are asked to simplify, the word simplify means write your expression with the least amount of terms possible. Okay, write your expression with the least amount of terms possible. Okay, so now when I look at this expression, I have one, two, three terms. Are any of them alike so I can add them together? And as you look carefully, you might come up with, wait a minute, these two terms are alike. I can add those together, and if I add them together, I get 8r plus 8. I have just simplified this now. I have written this in the least with the least possible terms. I can't add 8r and 8. They're not alike. Okay? Maybe I should just do one more with you. Let's say like number 36. We have a negative um, v plus 1 plus v. Oh, time out. I meant to say negative 6 v plus 1 plus v. Okay, so first of all, you might notice I'm supposed to multiply. I have the distributive property right here. I got to take negative 6 times v plus I got to take negative 6 plus 1. So let's do that. Negative 6 times v is negative 6v plus I got negative 6 times 1, which is negative 6, plus I still have this v. I don't distribute here. This was not in the parentheses. What's in the parentheses is what needs to be distributed, not outside. I, I do not want to multiply here times here. 
Okay, so now I want to simplify. Are there any like terms? Well, let me see. Yes, I have negative 6V here, and I have 1V here. I have same variables. Well, remember, what property allows me to rearrange this? Well, commutative. In my mind, I could say I have negative 6V plus 1V plus negative 6. I can add those together, and I get negative 5V. And instead of putting plus negative 6, that's the same as minus 6. There, I just simplified it. I now have two terms instead of three. I'm going to stop this video here. That should get you started on using the distributive property today.